Hey guys, Alex here. After the first three episodes of Orientation to Othello, today we finally want to talk about how to win in Othello. Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about how to win in Othello. So today's topics are understanding that mobility is key to the game, group small and inside, and making quiet moves. So there are so many friends and relatives that I've met in my life who once told me that Othello is such a simple game. All you have to do is just capture the edges and the corners and you win. I only wish it were that simple. The true key to playing Othello and mastering it is mobility. So mobility refers to the moves that you can make and how you can gain access to them. So consider the rules of the game each move requires you to actually flip at least one disc of your opponent's color. And therefore, your own disc would actually determine what moves your opponent can make. So the rules of the game is actually to capture as many discs as possible at the end of the game, not the start of the game and not during the mid of the game, but the end of the game. So minimizing your disc at the start will actually help you di dictate play. So let us now take a look at a game between black and white where black is essentially a more seasoned player and white is actually a player who tries to capture as many discs as possible at the start and capture the edges as much as possible. So usually a player like white who is trying to capture as many discs as possible and capture the edges, they will try to avoid going out of the center 16 boxes. So the moment when black jumps out to the center 16, white immediately captures the edge with as many disc flips as possible. So notice how Black has mani managed to actually minimize his disc and finally force limited options to his opponent, White. So over here, White can only choose to play a C-square or an X-square which, which would actually give Black the corner. So let us look at what will happen next. So as you can see, the game has ended with, four, with Black winning 49-15 to 15 against White. So if you have noticed during the game, Black has actually tried to minimize the number of discs he has on the board, which has resulted in him finally capturing an edge, giving minimal options to White. So the key of the game is no doubt grabbing the edges and also the corners to establish stable discs. Even before you grab an edge or actually get corners, what you need to do is actually control the mobility and limit the moves that your opponent has. That is the true key of winning Othello. Capturing key and strategic positions is also vital because you don't want to minimize yourself to a point that you get zero this at the start. That would actually be a wipeout and you would lose 64 to zero. So another tip would be to avoid creating more discs of your color that are exposed to available playable squares on the board. So let us now talk about group small insight. When I first started playing Othello, I actually met an experienced player by the nickname of Pan Dragon AU, who is actually a seasoned Australian player who was kind enough to actually offer me some free tips to the game. So the tips that he gave me was to play group small and insight. 
So group basically refers to grouping your disks together in a compact manner as much as possible. So let's say if we were to look at this situation, quite a standard opening over here. And basically if white were to play f6 for example, most moves over here would actually still keep your group of black disks grouped or linked as much as possible. However, a compact shape would actually function best. So c5 would actually be the best move here because it forms a 3x3 three three compact shape. This is less susceptible to your opponent playing a nice cut into the center to split your disc as compared to a different shape that maybe if you were to cut to say e d7, white would actually be able to cut back into the center fairly easily with c6. So another, another rule of thumb here would be actually to play small. Small basically refers to flipping fewer discs. So if you only know the principle of playing small, basically all of these moves seems to play small because all of them only flip one disc. However, if you couple that with the earlier rule that you learned about playing group and being as compact a group as possible, then you would be able to derive the best move at c5. So let us now progress a little further. Thirdly, another rule that was taught to me was that you should play inside. When you play inside, you generally give your opponent less options to actually play, uh, play moves using your discs. So over here, if you want to play inside, the best way would be to consider the move to f5. If you were to play f5, basically you're, you still group your disc together and at the same time your shape is somewhat nestled in between the white disc. This would actually prevent creating more moves for your opponent and at the same time be able to capture key strategic positions for yourself. So as the game progresses, if you continue to play groups more and inside without being wiped out of course, capture key strategic positions, you, you would then be able to dictate play and control the game. So that's basically group, small and inside. Let us now talk about making quiet moves. So quiet moves are essentially defined as moves which flip fewer discs and also moves that actually flip discs in generally fewer directions. So if we were to look at this situation where white is supposed to play his next move, a move like e8 would actually be a quiet move whereby it's only flipping one disc in one direction as compared to maybe a move to c4 that flips three discs in two different directions. So quiet moves also create minimal new moves for your opponent. A move like c4 would actually create a lot more moves for black to the top and the top right. So that's something that we want to avoid in playing Othello. So if white were to play e8 over here, he essentially doesn't create more than one move for black, which is to d8. Another way to look at quiet moves would be to actually consider moves that only flip this on the board that are surrounded by existing this and or the this you just placed on the board. So if you look at this situation for black to play, c4 would actually stand out as the best move possible because when black plays c4, he basically only flips the d5 white this and the d5 white this is essentially surrounded by the existing disc together with the disc that black is just about to make. So that is basically a nice guideline to looking for best moves. More often than not, quiet moves are best moves. So the topics covered in this lesson today are basically generic guidelines that you can follow to help improve your game and win in Othello. However, if both players actually understand the same principles, then the differentiating factor for two players would then be final techniques and openings. So we will cover that in the coming episodes. Stay tuned and thank you very much for watching my video.